What are the biggest storylines going into Maryland football's spring game? You are Locked On Turf, your daily podcast on the Maryland Turf. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's up, everyone? I'm Trey Moore, video content creator for 247 Sports and InsideMarylandSports.com and host of Locked On Terps for the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. So thank you for making us part of your day. And today's episode is brought to you by Monopoly Go. I admit it, I have a competitive side, and it is a big fan of Monopoly Go, the mobile hit twist on classic Monopoly. So join your friends and download Monopoly Go, now free in the App Store or the Google Play Store. Let's go over some of the biggest storylines going into Maryland football's game, Maryland football spring game, the real taste of kind of this next season. And it's an exciting time because you don't really get much football, actual football. It's a lot of news and it's a lot of what's happening here, what's happening in the portal, who are they adding, what is this injury, what is this quarterback battle, who's that player? Like, There's a lot of just kind of news, it's a lot of kind of just gossip, if you will, right now in terms of the spring football, but when you get the spring football game, you actually get to see some pads go on, you get to see an actual visual of some things that you want to kind of have questions to, and it's kind of the closest things you get to a real game, and it's interesting because it's your players against your own players, and so it's nice to finally get some actual football that we can talk about instead of always just talking about who should they add a quarterback? Well, you know, you guys know what I'm talking about. It's nice to get into some actual football game and some sports that I'm going to be looking at going into this game. You guys could guess the number one storyline. We got to talk about it, though, the quarterback battle. I'm sure everyone has their own opinion of what's going to happen in the spring game and their own predictions. I don't really have a prediction. I don't really – I honestly have no idea what quarterback is going to show up. I don't know what quarterbacks are going to show out. I, I don't know, to be honest, because I've heard different reports. I've heard different things. I've heard a lot about these guys struggling. I've heard that some that they're all showing some flashes, but I've heard it's been really inconsistent ride for all three of those guys, MJ Morris, Billy Edwards, and Cameron Edge. And I think this, this spring game is humongous for the quarterback battle. First of all, the media is going to be all over it, and we don't have the biggest media ever, but there's definitely a media presence, and they're all going to be talking about how does the quarterback battle look, how do these three guys look, and I think this Coach Loxley values a game like this, a pressure moment where you got to go out perform real game reps against a real defense. I think he wants to see what quarterback looks good, and I think it's going to have an impact on who the potential starters I do. I don't think it's going to be the end all be all, but I do think it's a pretty big slice of the pie. Of course they practice every day. And so coach Lashley gets to see them every day, but I do think this quarterback battle is important and who looks good, who doesn't look good, who struggled, who prepared well for the game, who knew the game plan going into the game. I, I think that's going to be an important part. And we're going to see is MJ, Morris really should he have the edge is do we see some of that playmaking ability is that arm as live as we think it is is Cameron edge as natural of a passer as we think he is we're going to see a lot of different things we're going to see Billy Edwards there's less kind of run game I feel like in the spring game um, there's less quarterback run game because you can't really hit the quarterback. So he's going to have to sit there and be more of a quarterback instead of having that running game kind of scheme to it where he can run a lot of quarterback draws, a lot of re-ops and stuff. Maybe you'll see some of that, but it's going to be a lot more passing game. Can he be successful in that type of offense? I, I think the quarterback battle, who looks the best at the end of the day, is going to be the biggest storyline, and that's going to make kind of the number one story and the biggest thing that we're going to talk about for until they name a starter, we're going to talk about this quarterback battle up until the game. Offensive line, five new potential starters. Who are the guys? How do the transfers look? I think that's an important part. How does the offensive line come together? Every single year I talk about it. In the Big Ten, you play some really good defensive lines. You play some elite guys up front, and it's important to show that that Maryland, that Maryland football can block those guys specifically this year because of having a new quarterback. We don't have Talia, and I don't know who's going to be our starter, but especially if Cameron Edge starts, Cameron Edge isn't a guy that's going to bail you out and get outside the pocket, and I like his arm, but he's not a guy that's going to do those type of things. So you need a guy. You're going to need an offensive line with a new quarterback and potentially a guy that doesn't move a ton. You're going to need them to give them time. And There's five new guys up there. 
how did the molding look? Who do they put together? I guess it's – I don't think it's – um, or I actually do. I think they do first-team offense versus first-team defense. And so who are the five guys they choose to start the game? How do they look? How the transfers look? Does it look right? Is there still a lot of work to do? That was a big topic of last offseason, but I think that's a really important part of it. It's always going to be important, but it's even more important with the struggles that we have currently in the quarterback room for some of that to come together and for some of that to come into fruition for Maryland football. I think that's one of the biggest storylines of the day. And then I also have a game plan kind of topic. There's not going to be as much game plan in the spring ball game, but maybe there's some. And I'm I'm actually curious about the kind of the run game. Do we decide to run the ball more in the spring ball game instead of passing the ball as much as we usually do? This might be a thing we more implement when the season actually comes. But with Talia gone, will we want to depend on Roman Hemby more? I, I think that's a storyline is, are we going to notice a different kind of offense and little tweaks where there's a lot more run game and a lot more runs to Roman Hemby? Maybe we get the ball out quicker and it's less processing and less decision-making. Maybe you see a little bit um, less of that and more of the run game. I'll, I'll, I'll be curious to see how that kind of comes in the spring game. You probably won't see a lot of that type of stuff because a lot of the stuff is going to be really vanilla looks and it's just going to be basic kind of things. It's not going to be a whole lot of game plan. It's going to be more, we want to see how you handle this. How do you handle that? How do you handle that passing scheme? How do you handle that passing concept? How do you handle this type of protection? It's going to be more of that type of stuff and more vanilla type of things rather than like, oh, we want to run the ball. But I do think you could see some of that and I'll be interested to see how that game plan looks. Secondary might be outside the quarterback room, might be the biggest kind of question mark going into the year you have three new starters in there including the slot guy but two new guys outside a new guy in the slot with glendon miller moving up to slots um say or moving up from the slot to the safety spot and it's like who on earth is starting at cornerback i know there's guys that we like i know there's players that we think could be really good players but it's is it Perry Fisher as good as we think? Is some of the other guys as good as we think? Jalen Husky, is it a younger kind of guy? I don't know exactly. And so I'll be interested to see what the cornerback room looks like. Are they going to play as good as the reports have said they've been playing? Apparently, the secondary has been pretty good all offseason. And so I'm going to be interested to see, does that hold up? And then I want to see, is the offense still behind the defense? That's been another report that the offense has not caught up to the defense and that and that's normal that's kind of how it goes early on and usually the offense outplays the defense or the defense outplays the offense early on but i want to see how much of that is true how much of that how much that is still in that's that's still true in the spring game is the offense a little bit better can we see the offense maybe step up a little bit or is the offense still going to struggle and is it going to be hard for the offense that's one of the things that i'm really interested in and i want to see how that kind of goes for maryland football and then i also want to see the wide receiver room who steps up is there any young wide receiver that look like they're good players or there's plenty of good players in that room for sure but is there any young guys that it's like we got to play him because I think right now Kaden Prather and Ty Felton it's obvious those are two guys but we need more guys than that and there's other players like Octavian Smith that are expected to take increased roles but how does that look overall and I think that's another big storyline and then just overall how does the offense look without Talia that kind of goes with the quarterback battle but I think that's another important part of it how do does the offense look without Talia? I think that's an important thing that we have to talk about, that we have to get into overall. I'm going to talk about my top five offensive players that I want to see, that I'm excited to see on Saturday. I will tell you about that after this ad from eBay Motors. Passion, drive, and patience. The formula for winning championships and is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. Superchargers, roof, flat, roof racks, LED headlights, and more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. And with all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to make your car the MVP, MVP and bring home a huge win. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. 
eBay guaranteed fit only available to U.S. customers. Here are the top five offensive players that I want to see at Maryland football spring game. I want to see everybody. That's for sure. Guys, let me know who you guys want to see in the spring game, who you're interested at looking at. But here's five guys. I tried to narrow it down. I didn't try and pick just three quarterbacks, but I do want to see these type of guys overall on this team. I think MJ Morris has to be number one for me. I have an idea of what Billy Edwards is. I have an idea of what Cameron Edge is. Of course, I don't know the full story with those two guys, but I have a pretty good understanding of how what they kind of are as a player. And in terms of the one quarterback that, to be honest, I don't really know a lot about. I haven't really got to see him play very much. I didn't turn on a bunch of NC State film. I didn't watch it back. I didn't watch a ton of it back. I watched some of the highlights, but it's hard to watch full games of an NC State game. I just haven't really gotten the chance and the time to do that. And so I kind of understand a little bit of what MJ Morris is, and I've heard he's been a little bit inconsistent. It's been kind of up and down for him this offseason. But I want to see what he looks like overall as a player. I want to see if he's in a good spot. Is he going to struggle early on? Is he still trying to learn the offense? I think that's one of the players that is a guy that I want to see. And does he have what it takes to be a starter at the end of the day? I think that's one of the most important things for um, MJ Morris. I want to see how some of his traits look as a player. Is he an elite athlete? Does he look fast? Does he look speedy? Does he look like he can get out the pocket? Does he look like he has a big arm? That's a big thing. What are the types of throws he can make? And I also think the rapport with the receiver room, how does he connect with those guys? How does that look with the receiver room? Is, is he throwing good balls? Is he on the same page with guys? Is he getting the ball to Ty Fell and Caden Prather? Because that's going to be one of the most important things. And I really want to see MJ Morris. And I'm interested to see how he does with some adversity. I, I mean, he definitely dealt with some adversity at NC State. But I want to see how he dealt with some adversity at Maryland. Him not being a starter yet. Him coming in and having to compete for it. And I'm not saying he's the guy. But I think a lot of people were like, when he committed, were like, He's going to be our next quarterback. He's going to be our guy for Maryland football, but that hasn't come true yet. And maybe it does come true, but how does he deal with adversity? How does he deal with some pressure that he kind of has to perform if he wants to be the guy? Eventually, you got to play well. Coach Locks is not just going to give it to anybody. And so how does he deal with that? How does he look when the lights are on? How does he play? And I kind of am interested to see what that looks like, how the look of that is, and I want to see what MJ Morris is all about. Is he as good as I potentially think he is? Or is it kind of worse than you think it is? And maybe we're in trouble in that quarterback room. Roman Hemby, I think could have a huge year is the next guy on my list for me. I know we know kind of what type of guy Roman Hemby is. But I don't think he's been as good. I don't think he's gotten a big enough opportunity to be as good as he potentially could be. I think after his redshirt freshman year, we were like, dang, this kid has a chance to be really special and could put up some big numbers and then had a down year in year two um, for Maryland um, football his redshirt sophomore year. And so I was looking at him and I was like, hmm, it's interesting, Roman Hemby, because he's explosive. He's fast. He can make you miss. He can receive. He's got really everything you want in this current landscape of college football and the NFL and kind of all those t- those type of guys, you know, you want guys that can catch the ball in the back, backfield. You want guys that can hit a home run type of run, can hit the hole, have speed, a Christian McCaffrey type, an Alvin Kamara type, if you will. You want those type of players that can play all three downs. And I think that's what Roman Hemby is. And I think that at times players have taken away because guys like Antoine Littleton, no hate towards Antoine Littleton, but just took some of his carries that I think deserved, Roman Hemby deserved to have more of. And I I think sometimes you got to get your best player of the ball. And I think Roman Hemby is extremely important this year. He has to be one of our best players. He has to be one of the best running backs in the Big Ten. And there's plenty of good backs in the Big Ten. But he's got to be one of the best ones because there's too, there's too many question marks this year in terms of the quarterback, in terms of the offensive line, in terms of the tight end room for me to sit here and be like, he doesn't have to be that good. Last year, he kind of got away with having some 
not as good numbers as he did his first year starting. But I don't think we get away with that this year. And part of that was the offensive line blocking. Part of that is we play some absolute goons up front, like playing Michigan up front. That's not hard to – or that is hard, very hard to run the ball against a team like that. Playing Penn State, that's hard to run the ball against a team like that. And so you play some of those top-end – Programs like that, Ohio State, that are hard to run the ball against, and your your numbers aren't going to look as good. And I think if we want to have a chance at beating anybody this year, I don't really care who it is, any Big Ten team, I think Roman Hemby's going to have to have a big year, especially with how that quarterback room looks right now. I think it's important for Roman Hemby to look pretty good overall, and I think he's one of the more important players that we have. And then moving on, Dylan Wade, I think, is a, another really – intriguing player this offseason. He's definitely been kind of the guy that's just like, whoa, whoa, like Dylan Wade looks this good. And so I want to see it because there continuously is reports and I see videos on Maryland football's Instagram. Dylan Wade might be like the next big thing for Maryland football is what they're kind of making it sound, what Coach Loxley's making it sound. And I've talked about it. I've talked about the tight end room. I'm going to talk about another tight end in a second. But is Dylan Wade that good? They're making him sound like he could be like like an all Big Ten type of player and that in his sophomore year he's going to be one of the better tight ends in the Big Ten. I'm not saying that's what he is, but they're making it seem like this kid has got, got it. Some guys got it, some guys don't, and they're making it sound like this Dylan Wade kid has got it. And I'm interested to see does he look that good and how good he's been hyped up to be all offseason. I mean, he played well in the Music City Bowl game. He didn't play a ton last year as a freshman, um, but he's got his chance now, and he looks like he's taking advantage of it. I want to see what it looks like. Is he running routes really well for a tight end? Is he blocking well? What is he doing really well at the tight end spot? Is he doing everything well? We'll see if he makes plays, but I'll be interested to see Dylan Wade because he's been the top the talk of the town in the offseason, just how well he's played. I remember seeing a clip of MJ Morris connecting with Dylan Wade and how ah, Dylan Wade just looks like a dude overall. And then another tight end that I want to see is Preston Howard. I think he's another guy. I think the tight end room really indicates our offense and is a big part of how good we could be because it's an inexperienced two guys that haven't been complete starters, but two guys that I have all the tools and traits to be elite in the Big Ten. And Preston Howard, 6'6", six, six, and last spring bowl, he made some plays that you're like, wow, we got to find a way to get this kid on the field, some big catches. And I want to see how does that look. He's supposed to be our tight end one this year, Preston Howard, along with Dylan Wade. Both of those guys are going to be our two tight ends. And I want to see this Preston Howard make some of those plays that make us say, this guy is going to be a top player for Maryland football. He is going to be next up. Even after we lose Corey Deitches, we have plenty of guys back there and Preston Howard and Dylan Wade to make up for it overall. And the last player I want to talk about is Cameron Edge. Cameron Edge is interesting. I know I talked about MJ Morris, and I said I do know a lot about Cameron Edge and Billy Edwards, and I do, but Cameron Edge is still kind of a mystery. He did look good in the Music City Bowl game, in my opinion, and I kind of love Cameron Edge. I love his game. I love talking to him, and I think he's a really good player and has a chance to win this job, but I want to see does it look like he should be the winner of this job in the spring ball game because Billy Edwards has gotten a start for Maryland. And so I've seen him play in live action some. Obviously, it's not very much, but I've seen Billy Edwards play a couple of games for Maryland football when Talia was out. I haven't seen a ton of Cameron Edge outside the Music City Bowl game. And I think it's a question mark. He's he's kind of the guy that's like, okay, he's the youngest guy in that room, but is he potentially the best player? Does he work the best for our offense? Is he going to get the ball where we need it to be? I think Cameron Edge has an opportunity to be able to do that and a chance to do that as well. Let's move on to some of the top defensive players that I want to see. I will tell you about that after this ad from Monopoly Go. Okay, well, yeah, I have a competitive side. We all do. And my competitive side is a big fan of Monopoly Go. I'm sure you've heard of it. It's been downloaded over 150 million times, and it's a great twist on Monopoly, where you play it 
on not one, but hundreds of monopoly boards in crazy locations, building up amazing cities that bring you big money. But the best part is messing with your friends. I can charge them rent on my iconic properties, just like classic monopoly. But now I can also heist their vaults of riches for myself. And the leaderboard showed me who the biggest monopoly guy is. But it's not just my competitive side that loves it. You can team up with your friends and people all around the world in time tournaments to earn huge rewards. To get in on the app and join your friends, download Monopoly Go. Now free in the App Store or the Google Play. Here are my top five defensive players that I want to see in Maryland football spring game. Yesterday, I did the freshman in my second segment. So make sure you guys go check that out if you want to see some of the freshmen that I want to see. You. But here are my defensive players. Dante Trader is my number one. And yes, I know Dante Trader is going to be a, a good player. He's going to be a starter for us. But is Dante Trader elite? I think he's really good. I think he's a good player. But can he be elite? That's a question mark I'm, I have about Dante. He's been a good player for us the last couple of years. He's been a starter for the last couple of years. But can he take on a new step where it's like, that kid's second team all Big Ten. He's going to go in the fourth round of the NFL draft. And I know Dante personally. I actually played lacrosse with him in high school, and he's a great kid. He's a great leader. I talked to him, interviewed him as well, and he wants to get back to the community. But I want to see Kenny take on a whole new level, and I think he has that type of talent. And obviously in the spring game, it's not like – it's just going to show like, oh, this guy is going to be the best player in the Big Ten. Like, no, it won't probably exactly be that. But I want to see is that like he makes a couple of plays and we're like, that's why he's potentially our best player on defense. That's why I think he has a chance to be one of the better players in the Big Ten this year. That's why I think he has a chance to get drafted. I want to see that any of those flashes show up for Dante Trader because I know he has to be a leader this year. I've seen him lead on the Instagram. I've seen those kind of things from Dante, and, and he has a lot of great attributes as a player. He's got some speed to him. He's got he's a real athletic kid, and so I want to see how does Dante Trader look overall. Then moving on, Perry Fisher is interesting. Could he be a starting quarterback this year? Um, Perry Fisher, he's intriguing as a player. Last year in the Music City Bowl game really showed out, has never really played that much for us, and you didn't really hear his name much last year. He's not, He wasn't like a backup, really. It was just like he was kind of on the roster, a guy that looked like Maryland football wanted to develop, and then you're hearing reports about him this offseason after the, the Music City Bowl game that he He's been looking really good, and I've heard that he has those traits, but it took some time maybe to develop them, and I want to see how does Perry Fisher look because he did have to transition to cornerback. He didn't play cornerback in high school, and so I want to see how does Perry Fisher look. Is he as really good as maybe he could be? Like, Is he the guy that starts on the outside? Does he have one of the cornerback spots? I'm interested to see that, or is it somebody else? And I think Perry Fisher has a chance to put up a really cool performance this offseason and really surprise some people this offseason. So I could, I'm really interested to see what Perry Fisher can do, and I'm interested to see what type of player he is. And then the freshman, Brandon Jacobs. I wasn't going to put any freshmen in here, but Brandon Jacobs, he has a chance to be special. He could just be too good not to get in the field. And I want to see what it looks like. You watch film and you watch huddle film and you get a kind of a grasp, but you want to see him against other Maryland players. You want to see him against other Big Ten players. And this is my first shot to see Brandon Jacobs live on TV against real type of guys and real players and at a college game. And we'll see how how fast he's picked up the system, how well he knows it. But I, I want to see Brandon Jacobs and see what he can do. And then Jalen Husky, I think another cornerback, plenty of guys in the secondary that I want to see. I guess all the guys I've said are guys in the secondary just because that's where the inexperience is, especially at the cornerback room. But I want to see Jalen Husky, the transfer from Bowling Green. He is pretty like – I think you would say he's supposed to be one of our starting cornerbacks this year. And he's also been a guy that showed up in the stories and the reports that he's played pretty well. But I want to see how well – this, how, how well has he played? Is he looking like he's as good as maybe we recruited him to be? Does he look like he's going to be the same player that he was from Bowling Green? Is he a playmaker? What kind of player is Jalen Husky? It's hard to get a good grasp of these guys because I can't really watch film of Bowling Green and specifically walk in on him. It's just not possible with finding video and video that um, the camera angles that you want to just focus on a cornerback. But He's the guy that I want to see his type of game. And then Kellen Wyatt. I'm going to see 
He's been a starter. He's played since freshman year. Can he be? Can he take another step? He's been he's been pretty good, I would say. He's been a good player for us. But can he be a really good player, similar to Dante Trader? But I think Dante Trader has been like a pretty high level player. But can he get to great? Can Kellen Wyatt take on new production? Can he be a player that is like okay? We look at him as an All Big Ten type of player, and he's played for a while now. And Maryland football has been really high on him. So I want to see does Kellen Wyatt have the shot at doing. But that's all we have for today. I will be back on Monday talking about the spring game and what it looked like and all the reports. I hope you all have a good weekend, and I hope the spring game goes well. Thank you all for listening to to Locked on Terps. Make sure you like and subscribe, but thank you for listening to Locked on Terps.